so as far as progress on my side, I've taken time to basically do two things. Uh, one, revisit uh, steering control. I mean, Jeff has uh, educated me on um, my low level steering control has to be able to take radians per second input and up to this point, you know, um, that might sound simple. I wasn't ready to deal with radians. Well, no, I have never said that it has to take radians per second as an input. I keep telling you, if you're running the tab planner, it's putting out an angle, it has to respond to an angle. And I've said that over and over, and you keep saying, well, but Jeff says we need radians per second. Well, no. Yeah, it has to be one way or the other, and your your check check mark in the Teb planner decides: is it radians, is it an angle in radians, or is it a, a rotational velocity in radians per second? Okay, and so maybe it would be more technically correct for me to say I sent Vinny a note saying this is set one way for the lawn tractor and the way the lawn tractor appears to be said is it's radians per second. Is that correct? And it's like I'm still waiting on a reply back from Benny. Well, the simplest way is go look at that parameter of what you're running and see which way it's set. Well, I did and it is set for in the, in the YAML file, it is set to uh, yeah. I'm just pulling it back up. So that's the Uh, that's not what I was looking for. So that's the command velocity max. Yeah, so these are still my two questions. Um, should the low level steering co controller and I'm not, I don't think I posted the actual um, link to the YAML file. I could probably find it reasonably quick. Um, but the point is, you can make it eat one way or the other just by changing that parameter. So it's not it's not real mysterious. You either set it and say, give me an angle or don't set it. And it says it gives you rotational velocity. Yeah, and again, so, I'm not. So that answers your question right there as to which way it is and, and how you have to respond to that. <clears throat> but it, well, I know you're you're giving me the ability to design it any way I want to. I was trying not to be the designer. I was trying to do what these guys had put in. So in the... And keep in mind, the simulator may treat it differently than what the physical tractor does. I, I, I kind of got the impression the stuff to make the simulator run is kind of a hack just, just to make it work. But you can still put out an angle from your temp planner and make your tractor respond to it. You just have to have put some arbitrary scale factor in between them. So, so rather than getting it down exactly to the right scale factor to get your wheels to turn exactly the angle you tell it, you can just put an arbitrary number in there. If it gives you an angle of say 45 degrees, you just multiply that by whatever you have to match to get your steering to move. And that'll, that'll get you going. And then 
then once we figure out how to uh, say drive the circles and measure the exact angles and everything, that's that's all you really need to do there. And probably even if it comes out as radians per second, probably if you just multiply that by an arbitrary scale factor and set your wheels to something reasonable, that would probably work also. It's just that they're, they're two different concepts, but they're essentially, I think it'd be, I, I think if you put an arbitrary scale factor, I need the one, I think it will work. So in an attempt or, what, to be as what we precise could do, as possible. What we could do is we could ask Javier, he's got, he's got something that actually works. Maybe he can well, tell you. <clears throat> Well, so instead of going off and redesigning it, in the in this particular YAML file, which is the default for the lawn tractor, the default on line twenty-two is command angle instead of rotational velocity is set to true. Now. I could guess what that means, but Jeff, do you want to tell me what you think that means? That means it will publish an angle, a steering angle, as opposed to a rotational velocity. Everything else in ROS uses rotational velocity, but this was, if you go look at the uh, the the web page that we're talking about the temp plan, it'll say it'll give you the definition for that. So you know, go to the the original ROS wiki and look up temp plan, and you go down the line, it'll say here's. A, Here's a parameter called command angle. It says command angle instead rotational velocity true or false. And right on that's got a little block of text above the, yeah. the definition. Can the you definition. zoom the image because I, I cannot see the, the code. Um, okay, I, now, now I see. Okay. And again, that's in that. YAML file. So just pull up, pull up the Ross Wiki and type in Teb Planner. <clears throat> Try to search for Teb. We'll probably get you there. Yeah, try that one. <clears throat> Let's go down the parameters and or put in uh, I yeah, I just just go down to where you find the parameters. It's not found. Real, you tested to the low at the the maximum accelerator uh, parameter I, here in the in the YAM file that you are shared. I have. I not. remember that you had problem with with the navigation. You, you I haven't share... changed that yet because okay. it was suggested that I, you know, I've got a, something fundamentally wrong with my okay. low-level steering controller, so I okay. didn't try this yet. Because I have problem with these two parameters. If are too high, maybe uh, the the robot responds too fast, and maybe the, the the wheels slice over the soil, and and the navigation works wrong. This is a problem in my case. So I need to download these two parameters to to improve the navigation. I will happily change that as soon as I believe I'm got <laughs> steering control. Um, so go down one line from there, the next block of stuff. So it says there's a parameter set of true or false and they give you an explanation of what it's doing.
So when it's the tech and true. And and when when the TED planner tries to move, it's going to put out a forward velocity and either a rotational velocity or a steering angle, depending on what you have this thing set to. So that's just simply telling you what, what is going to be coming out of the TED planner. And if that's set to true, then that's a steering angle coming out of there as part of that command velocity message. Yeah. And, and what do you, do you have any insight into what the range, I mean, what's that? <clears throat> Uh, right there in that description, it says if you set it to an angle, it limits it to plus and minus pi over two. So that's plus and minus 90 degrees of steering. So that's saying, to me, that says it's going to clip it at that's the maximum steering angle that will allow. Now, you, you inevitably, you want to set your tractor to respond to whatever angle you tell it up to whatever your maximum is. And then I think by changing these parameters where it's, it, they talk about the car-like parameters in the TEB planner, I think by changing those numbers, you can limit this down from plus and minus 90 down to whatever range you have. I think you said you had like plus and minus 72 degrees was the maximum or something. And that's why I'm thinking if you just put an arbitrary scale factor in there and set it to something and, and let it drive, it may not steer hard enough. And just if it doesn't, then just, just arbitrarily make that number bigger. You know, without figuring out all the angles and all the other stuff I was talking about before, just just put an arbitrary number in there. But I think if you look at the code that you have between your command velocity, command velocity mux code, and where was the other one? Because in there it was trying to limit what was coming out of the tab planner to to plus and minus 0.3. And based on what we see here, that the, that flag is set to true, that means we're going to treat that as an angle coming out of the TEB planner. So I think it's artificially trimming that down to, to point plus or minus 0.3 radians, whatever, whatever that comes out to be. That's like, uh, I, I, or I, I, I calculate that's plus or minus 17 degrees is all that you're going to allow the TEB planner to put out. And I think that was done because it was trying to, trying to be made, trying to force it to work with the simulator, I think is why that was done. So it limited what's coming out of the TEB planner to a very small number, and then arbitrarily multiplied that by three to match that plus or minus one that's going out to your, to your vehicle. And again, I think that was to make the simulator work. And that's why I think you could just rip that scaling out of the, uh, the command velocity mux code. And this right here is gonna limit it to plus or minus pi over two. And then by, by controlling the uh, parameters, they, uh, I, I haven't actually gone through and tried to tune this tab planner, but there, there's numbers there that's going to, as you change them, that's going to change how aggressively the thing wants to, wants to steer and wants to, wants to move. So you I think, if you think with this set to true, the values that I'm going to get without any adjustments are going to be plus or minus pi divided by two. That's my interpretation, yeah. And, you know, which is meant to represent full left or full right. No, that says that's, it's just gonna clip it at that value. And if you, if you turn your wheels a full 90 degrees left and try to drive forward, one of your wheels has to be skidding sideways. So it's just saying, in the code, they're just saying, we're not going to let it go any farther than that because they didn't want it to turn 5,000 degrees to the left. So they just arbitrarily put a number in there and said, well, that's 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 about as, as reasonable as we could allow anybody to turn. So it's just got an artificial limit built into the thing. And then it's up up to you to uh, somewhere, but by tuning the TEB planner, say, well, well, don't turn that hard. You know, We're just kidding about that. Don't actually turn that hard. And that, yeah, the, those numbers like that might be the, what controls right there is the turning radius. And I can't think what else is in there, but but by adjusting that number up and down, that's gonna, uh, so, so that plus or minus pi over two is, is that's a hard limit. The, the code will not let you go any higher than that. But it, by, by adjusting these numbers like the uh, radius and I can't think what else is in here, those should artificially limit down. If, if, that'll let it drive in a more reasonable fashion by, by 
backing off how aggressive it is. But regardless of any of that, it's going to put out an angle. You got to get that angle coming out of that and map it somehow to your steering. And I think the quickest way is to put an arbitrary scale factor and set it to, uh, if you set it to a one, one to one, then it's going to try, if the template says turn 90 degrees, your steering is going to try to turn 90 degrees. And we know because of those uh, calculations you did that uh, maybe 72 degree, degrees is the most that it'll turn. So just, just by putting an arbitrary scale factor in between there, you, can, you should be able to control that. You know, so, well, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to forget about any arbitrary scale factor, forget about any manipulation. I'm just trying to understand right now if command, if, if Ted Planner is putting out pi minus two, is it wanting my low level controller to, to make a, a turn of 2.2, .2, um, to make a turn of, that would generate a, a turning radius of 2.2. .2. That's what I'm trying to understand. It, it's going to try to generate a turn based on your minimum turning radius of 2.2 .2 and your wheel base of 1.27, I assume. So it's going to take the values you give it here, and that's the kind of number it's going to generate. Because I don't want to do any arbitrary adjustments. I want to, I want to, I think, have my low level controller respond to what's natively being published. That ideally that is what you want to do, yes. Because I'm quite honestly thinking I want to strip out command velocity. I want to take this out. I don't know why I would need this. Uh, need what? This command velocity mux. The, the, the whole intent of command velocity mux was to allow you to switch between your joystick and an automated control signal. So if it's right, driving by the automated control signal and you touch the joystick, that's to uh, for, uh, that's to turn off the automated part and let you control it by the joystick. Now there's extra scaling that got stuck in here. I don't know if you did that or Matt did that or somebody else did. But that's, did. Ex that's extra stuff that was put in there that I'm thinking that was put in to make it work with the simulator. I think I accomplish I think I have my low-level controller subscribed to these two, the, these two um, messages. You you do, but don't down, down but down below you have it's it's clipping your your command no, angle I'm, coming in. I'm not going forward. I am suggesting I take this out of my software stack and I rewrite my low level steering controller to subscribe to these two um, messages. And if it receives a message on move base command, it knows it's going to get um, minus pi divided by two, you know, it's going to get pi divided by two plus or minus. Um, and if it gets pi divided by two, it means a full left or full right. I don't remember which is left or right. No, no I don't believe it does mean that. It's just arbitrarily limiting the arbitrarily limiting the maximum angle you can do here, and it's up to you on your parameters to tell it what is left full left and full right for your turn. Well, wait a second. When command velocity, when this, when do you think this ever wants it to be full left or full right? When move base. 
wants to go full left or full right, what do you think that value will be? I think it will be an angle that represents full left or full right. How, and I'm suggesting that it will be <clears throat> pi divided by two. And this is where somebody with experience <laughs> could, could really help because I don't know what else it could be. It doesn't know anything about the angles that I turn. And, th and that's why they artificially limited it to plus and minus 90 because anything beyond that is just ridiculous. So they do, they're artificially limiting the maximum output to those numbers. And in real life, it will not the numbers will not be that big because in real life you you can't turn that sharp so by changing your parameters of minimum turning radius and wheelbase that controls how big that number will be but it's going to be clipped at plus and minus pi over two because that's all that it, that that's all it's going to allow it to put out it doesn't want to hear... i'm sorry go ahead jeff it, it doesn't want to generate anything that's totally ridiculous so that's why they clip it at those values Javier, do you have any sense of, do you have any idea what the range of values are coming out of move base on command velocity? I I think that at, at the end you you need to to calibrate your your robot to to respond to to the angle basically. So if you I don't know if you use the the navigation stack and 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 tell to your robot that go to to some place with 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 the goal. And the robot don't don't go, and 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 finally uh, end at, at the goal at the goal that you said. I think that the your robot don't don't work don't work good. So I think that at at the end is a calibration. You need to um, uh, empirically resolve the problem, uh, touch the parameter of the of the low level controller to respond at the angle. And, and maybe it's not important the the range of the of the steering in in the in the ROS uh, parameter because at the end you need to calibrate uh, but for, for your road I, I resolve uh, the problem empirically so I I don't ask the 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 sense of of these angles because I I don't use so. Yeah. Have you ever, so when you say you don't use, you don't use move base or you don't use? No, no, I, I'm, I'm use move base. I'm use uh, move base, but I working hard in my low level controller. So, so if I put a goal in a map, uh, I work uh, in the low level controller that uh, for the robot respond to this goal. Because at, at, at the end, the, the ROS uh, move base only sent an angle to, to the robot. So you need to respond to this demand. Are you using this parameter? No. Maybe you can touch this parameter when your low level control works and you can navigate your robot. But if you have a problem with your low level controller, the, this parameter don't change anything because your low level controller don't work good. And, and again, Ross sure is an interesting world. And again, just to clarify, the only time this makes a difference is if you're using the Teb Planner plugin. And if, if Javier is not using the Teb Planner, then this is a moot point for him which means if he's not using the Teb planner, he can use move base or he can use move base flex. It doesn't, doesn't matter. They both generate rotational velocity output. Only when you plug in the Teb planner, do you have this option to switch that to a, uh, to a, to a steering angle as opposed to rotational velocity. It's possible to think in, in, in an optimization problem. You need to optimize your, your, your low level controller to respond to the demand of the move base or, or move base flex. I, I, I think in, in this. 
when I resolve the problem. What's unclear to me is um, in order for your low level controller to react to the output of move base, you have to have a frame of reference on what are the acceptable outputs or what are the, you know, what's the likely output that you're going to get from move base. Um, and I'm just thinking, well, if, although this language is rather, I think, cryptic and unclear, I'm thinking the output is going to be plus or minus pi divided mm -hmm. by two. And I guess it's yeah. only intuition to me that suggests, oh, well, if the extremes are plus or minus pi divided by two, that must mean extreme left means Be Yes, because if, if you touch this this parameter, you need to to recalibrate your low level controller. So at, at the end, it's the same because if if you touch the, the angles in, in in the YAM file, you need to recalibrate your low level controller. So it's it's better if you only uh, calibrate your low level controller and, and don't touch the the YAM file because you need to to do both of them, because if you change the YAM file, you need to change the, the low level controller to calibrate again the robot. So I'm, I work hard in, in, in the low level controller and try to, to don't touch much the, the YAM file. This is my approach. And, and for me, it works. I, I don't know if you have lucky or... or uh, if I may make a couple of points here. Uh, number one, Al, you just said, well, the language is confusing. And you immediately turned around and said, whatever move base is putting out. Well, technically, it's whatever Teb planner is putting out. So if, if you're going to immediately jump back to move base, which is the higher level, that's that's not, we don't care at this point. So whether you're running move base or move base flex, it depends whether or not you have the Teb planner loaded in as opposed to the normal local planner. Okay. So if you if you have the temp planner plugged in, it's going to be generating an angle or a rotational velocity. Yeah. Now the other point is, if you say, well, it says right there plus and minus nine plus and minus pi over two, so you're going to assume that's the maximum. Well, what if the velocity says we're going to clip that to plus or minus 10, 10 meters per second? Are you going to go into scale your lawn tractor and force your lawn tractor to go ten meters per second, or are you going to are you going to let it go at a reasonable speed? Well, there's a maximum velocity. Um, parameter in the YAML file as well. So my, again, well, my... But that's that's something different. That's that's a parameter that says we're going to artificially limit it to whatever that velocity is. But now what if there was just a checkbox that says, I, I want to set the speed and we're just going to clip that at plus and minus 10 meters per second, because they don't know what you have out there. They don't, they don't know if you have a car, they don't know if you have an airplane, they don't know if you've got a little ready control car. Somewhere they're going to set maximum limits and say, well, that, that's just stupid to go that fast for, for a, any vehicle. You know, because they might if you use it as an airplane, it might go 600 miles an hour. And then you'll say, oh, well, I got to make my lawn truck with 600 miles an hour because it will do that. So it, it's that's that's I think that's what they're telling you on that steering. They just say it would be ridiculous to turn more than plus or minus 90 degrees. So we're just going to clip it in the software. It, it probably has something to do with the way the software works also that they can't generate numbers bigger than that without doing something something bizarre. So they're just arbitrarily saying that's the maximum number this thing will ever put out, regardless of what kind of vehicle you have. So I guess it's... Then, then by changing those two two parameters in the YAML of the, the minimum steering angle and your wheelbase, that's going to control what numbers the TED planner will put out. Because it, it doesn't know what you have out there. So if your vehicle, vehicle could turn plus and minus 30 degrees, or we'll say, plus or minus 45 degrees, which is pi over four. If that's what your vehicle can do, then you change your, your minimum steering radius in your wheelbase. Or, or at that point, you could probably take that minimum turning radius right there of 2.2 and a wheelbase of 1.27. And you can calculate what angle it thinks that would take to turn at that minimum turning radius. Yes. I mean, everything you said is likely to be correct. I'm just demonstrating how my twisted logic works. I thought 
something with the name Teb Planner in YAML and a parameter file with these things as input, that those things would have been used to calculate things. And if there were... They, they are used, but it has nothing to do with pi over two. Pi over two is just, a, I, I think that's just an absolute maximum. It will not go any higher than that. So if you set these parameters for your vehicle, it's never going to put out that big a number. And if it does, you've got a problem. And, and again, my fundamental question is for the low level controller. I'm, I'm leaving this conversation with you guys saying you think there is no way to know what Tab planner is going to output. And so it's, I believe in this, like it's going to be a mystery as to what my low level controller needs to deal with coming out of Tab planner because it, I don't know. So I'm like, okay, it's a mystery, I guess. Maybe, maybe you can think in, I don't know, in, in, in a particle model in where you robot is a, is a dot. And and the move base or move base flex send the the angle to to this this point and the rotation of this point. But when you need to translate this into a real robot, you need to calibrate your low level control to respond to this man. I I think in my mind that this is the so it, it's a, your robot is a point for move base. But the real robot is more complex. Maybe come an approach to understand who move base sent to to the robot. And that's actually the way that the uh, stage simulator works right now. It's just a point that's yes. moving around in space, and that's why there were a lot of shortcuts taken to get that to move around in the simulator. And you know nobody cared. Nobody cared what the angles were. Now uh, what was I going to say? Oh, a couple of points. I posted a link to the uh, the chat there, and it's just some guy on YouTube saying, here's a picture of my four-wheel car, and here's all the things, and he talks about curvature, and he talks about angles and all this kind of stuff. And I, I, I think if I watched that hard enough two or three times, and I found another one that was that got more, more in-depth into the mathematics that maybe I can figure out how this actually works. But, but back to the point, you've got a clean dividing line between Ross and your low-level vehicle. And that is your command velocity message. So your, your, your controller, which in this case happens to be the Teb planner plugged into move base or move base flex, it's generating an angle. And that angle is controlled by your parameters in the YAML file. But the point is it's a steering angle that goes centered is zero and full left is one angle, full right is another angle. And that is controlled by these parameters in your YAML file. Now on the other side of that magical line there, you've got your low level controller it says, I'm going to take it in an angle and set the wheels to that angle. So if it says, turn 10 degrees to the right, you just have to scale to 10 degrees to the right. And if it says, turn 45 degrees to right, you turn it to 45 degrees right. If it gets too big a number, say, well, clip it so we don't, we don't smash anything. But the two are totally independent. You've got that message coming across, say, set the steering angle to this. So down at your low level, you set your wheels to that angle, regardless of what's up above. So if you just go to the command line and type in command velocity, this forward velocity, this steering angle, it should respond to that, regardless of what your tab planner is doing. The, the, two are, the two are basically independent. They both just agree on the fact that is a steering angle. I'm sure that's all clear to you. I'm still... Um... You're still trying to work in all this stuff that doesn't apply is what, what's confusing. Well, I'm, I'm trying to formulate a really simple question so you can give me a really simple answer because, I mean, these are givens. I can digitally control my steering and I can digitally tell my low-level controller, go straight, full left, full right, and any... Uh, I can issue a, a command to get any position in between full left and full right digitally. What I'm still unclear about is 
when um, the tab planner on the command velocity, move base command velocity statement, what is going to be the maximum values that it's going to output? And I guess I'm just going to have to test that and try to figure it out. Because I don't know as I sit here what its maximum value is going to output. And I think I need to know that because whatever that maximum is, that's what I want when I want to have my low level controller issue a full left or a full right. So my problem statement at the moment is I don't know what Teb Planner output maximum on the move base command velocity statement is. I, I agree with that. You don't know what it is, but it's also irrelevant. How it's can it be irrelevant? Because it's, it's, going to generate, it's going to generate an angle. It's up to you to take that angle and set your steering. Forget about this maximum left and maximum right because the TEB planner doesn't know and it doesn't care. Down on your vehicle itself, you want to take an angle and scale it to your to your steering to get your max left, uh, max left and max right. So if if for instance someone's how can I not care what move base command velocity value is? Because you're going to tweak it once you get the steering set. You're going to tweak it to to give you the correct values coming out. Uh, walk me through an example of that. I just I mean this, I'm having a logic problem with that. Okay, first of all, forget about Ross and just look at your low-level vehicle. You've got a command velocity message comes in. It's got an angle of zero, so you want that to set your steering to the center, and then. You want to know how far left can I turn before I get to my left hard stop and whatever angle that is, you want to scale that angle to maximum left. And then when you turn it full right, whatever angle that is, you want to scale your steering to that value. So the value coming in from, from just a command velocity message that you type in, you want to be able to type in whatever that maximum left angle is, you want to type that in and you want the steering to go to that. And then everything in between should just be uh, you know, like a, a, I was going to say linear. It's it, it's what you have now, but instead of putting in a plus and minus one, you want to put in plus and what plus and minus whatever angle your vehicle can turn it. So you just want to change the scale factor from plus and minus one to plus and minus whatever angle your vehicle can do. And then if you can get it to do that, you know, like type in the command and say turn so it. So you turn want it to say, just turn to say clarify. pile before. Yeah. You think the scale straight is zero and full left is, uh, is it minus going left or, or positive going left? I think it's positive going left. So full left is positive one and full right is negative one. Currently, that's what you have. No, 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 not what I have, what it's supposed to do. Well, again, plus minus one has nothing to do with this. Maybe that's your problem. You're, you're assuming, um, Jeff, you're, assuming you're telling what, me what... <laughs> you're assuming that what Matt did was correct. No, I'm not. You're, forget everything in the past. I'm trying, to, I, I'm trying to say, you're trying to tell me the way to do it, and I'm writing stuff down. So forget the history. You said make your low-level controller go full left plus one and full right minus one. No. Okay. No, I said, make it go full left, whatever angle that is, and make it go full right, whatever angle that is. That's what you're gonna specify. You're gonna specify the angle at full left and the angle at full right. You're not gonna specify plus and minus one. That was just an arbitrary thing that, I assume Matt made that up because it was convenient at the time, probably convenient for the stage simulator. So- When you say angle, tell me what you mean by angle because um, let 
lets us, well, tell me what you mean by angle. I mean, if you take your steering wheel and you turn it some amount to the left, you can take it, put your protractor on the ground and say, I turn my wheels 10 degrees. That's what I mean by an angle. So we're gonna have our command velocity is gonna say, turn to the left 10 degrees. That expects your steering wheel to turn that far to that steering angle. That's, that's what I mean by angle. Okay, and let's, let's just assume that there's 30 degrees left and 30 degrees right. So okay. if I input 30, you mean 30 now represents full left. Uh, that's what you're gonna make it, do you? Yeah. And negative 30 means full right. Uh, correct. That's actually a uh, polarity, but yes, that's that's and what those I mean. are. Those are integer numbers. Uh, they, they wouldn't. They don't. No, they're not integer numbers. They're, it's an angle in radians, and especially since it's in radians, it's going to be. It's like I don't one point five seven eight nine six two or whatever it's going to be. So, so but no, it's a floating point. It's radians. Yes. And it's radians by definition, that's what Ross uses. So the Teb planner will put out a, an angle in radians as defined on that. They, they told you that on that page on the Ross wiki. So it's gonna be putting out an angle in radians and you have to scale that, you know, I, we, we keep saying 30 degrees cause I don't think in radians, I don't know, you know, how many radians 30 degrees is. So so I, I, I use those interchangeably there. But but yes, so right now, what you're doing right now, you're taking in plus and minus one and scaling at the full left and full right. Instead, take in whatever whatever angle you measured, and we just said 30 degrees. So you want to scale plus and minus 30 degrees to full left and full right. And then you're you're done. You're done at that point. And now, now if you can get it to do that from just typing in a command velocity message and saying go to 30 degrees and it does that. Then you go back to your tab planner and it's going to be already, already automatically be putting out angles in radians. And if you, depending how you have your parameters set, it might try to turn full plus or minus 90, which you can't do because you don't have that much range. Or you just change your minimum turning radius and your wheelbase. You adjust those to get to the point where tab planner does not try to turn any harder than that 30 degrees. So it's all based on your vehicle itself. It has nothing to do with what the temp planner wants to do. It's all based on your vehicle. If you say turn to 30 degrees, you expect it to do that. If you tell it turn to 10 degrees, you expect it to do that. So you, you can work out this whole thing right on your vehicle itself to, to set that angle. And once that's like once that's done, then you go back to temp planner and say go, and it's going to start putting out angles. And you just have to make sure that those are scaled correctly so they don't put out too high of too high a value that will go beyond your in limit and break it. I assume you've got some kind of limits in there right now that says if you get this far, don't, you know, it internally on your vehicle, you should be clipping that so it doesn't try to try to turn too far and break anything. And I think you like you said you're already doing that somewhere. So the bottom line is on your vehicle, you want to scale it to an actual angle coming in and that angle, the maximum angle, it has to be whatever your vehicle can turn. So if it can turn 30 degrees or you, you measure like 72 degrees. It, it, it gets confusing there because the Ackerman angle is different. And again, back to the video that I posted, if you go through and watch that, he comes up with like two equations somewhere down in there. He says left angle is going to be like two pi over L or something. I can't yeah. think what they are. So he lets you calculate that direction. And if you flip the numbers around, you could probably calculate the other way. So I, I would just set it down to something smaller and say, um, I don't know how much smaller right now, but just, if you if you can agree that thirty is plus or minus thirty is your hard stops, get tell it something smaller than that to to start with, just to get it to uh, get it to turn, and then uh, eventually. No, I don't. I don't want to say eventually. I've said right now that's what you want to do. You just want to scale at an incoming angle and scale <clears> it to your steering. And the Ackerman is not linear. The 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 wheels turn different angles for a specific turning ready. So it's, this is another important well, that, thing. Yeah, that's why I say, if, if you watch that video I just posted, the guy goes through and, and says, he says, 
Well, it's what you had a vehicle with three wheels on it. And he talks about the this imaginary center wheel. And then he puts the, the left front wheel and the right front wheel. And he talks and he says, well, when you go around the curve, one of them has to turn sharper than the other one. And that's why I'm saying uh, it, initially you may not want to. Uh, it, actually, it probably won't matter. If you, if you if The other day you, you drew lines on the ground and you I think you said 72 degrees is how far to turn. And so if you'd scale it to plus or minus 72 degrees, then if, if that's, again, that's gonna be a, a, a max left hard stop and right, max right hard stop or whatever. I think that would, it would probably, probably work. So if you do that, then if you put in an angle, say turn, turn right 30 degrees, it should turn right, your steering should turn right 30 degrees. And that's, that's what you're after at this point. You wanna specify a steering angle and have it automatically do that. And that's exactly what you're doing right now, but you're using plus and minus one as the reference instead of an angle of plus and minus, say, 30 degrees or whatever. So in reality, on your low-level stuff, instead of scaling, find find the line of code that says scale plus and minus one to to plus and minus whatever your A to D counts are. Just change that to plus and minus whatever the angle is to plus and minus your plus and minus A to D counts. So it should be a fairly fairly direct translation there from one to the other. Thank you for going through that. I know that was a bit torturous. And then, and then once you, once you get to the point where your command velocity, you know, you put in an angle, a steering angle, and it will do that. Then go back to your um, that command velocity mux and rip out that scaling that was put in there, because you want to take the number directly from the tab planner and feed that directly down to your vehicle, because now it it now is going to tell you what angle to turn at, and you don't want that artificial scaling in between there. So, I'm, so. The more I think about it, the more I don't think I want that command velocity mux in there at all. I think I want to deal with two inputs at the uh, low level controller. Well, as long as you put all the, the functionality from the command velocity mux down into your, your vehicle, you could do that. The, the whole point of that is, so if you're driving around and you could, you could hit a, a button on your joystick or hit a, uh, something, it, it, blocks, it blocks the automatic stuff for what, five seconds or something. There, there's it's it's just a handy thing to have if you wanted to if you didn't want to run with your joystick at all you could just take the output from the tab planner and feed it directly to the vehicle and have it drive around but then you won't be able to, to use your joystick at all so if you're going to move that down to low level controller you could do that but now you're going to put code in there that says oh as long as i'm basically the same code that's in the command velocity much you're going to have to put that in your low level controller if you want it to work the same way so that way you can say pick up the joystick, drive it around, and then say, okay, now I'll start at the TEB planner. And as long as I'm not touching the joystick, it'll pass those values directly through and use those. So it's just a matter of where, where you want to put that. Or whether you want that functionality at all. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't care if you can drive with the joystick, then you can take it out completely. Well, welcome to the, um... <laughs> Do we have steering control uh, conference call? Javier, Jeff, Bird, I don't think we've had a chance to meet. Sorry, uh, Al Jones here. Anyone else want to uh, comment about what's going on in their world? Oh, so Christian did get logged in. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, Christian, uh, Christian Bird. I, last time I looked at Ross was a few months ago, so I'm trying to refamiliarize myself with it. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to the uh, nightmare. I mean, welcome to the party. Yeah, I got a, a, a couple of big tomes of information on how to how to do it. Just a, an Indian fellow wrote a book on it. Um, so I've been going through that to get refamiliarized with it. Yeah, I think that's the same book that are, that keeps coming up. Um, I can't I can't remember his name right offhand, but I think that's probably the same book that everybody. Everybody it's like at. rocks by example, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So just getting, trying to re-familiarize myself with how it models things and how it sends messages and whatnot. I don't know who the author is. Uh, Joseph Linton is also a good author. He's got a number of Ross related books out. It's, I mean, what I've run into, it's like, it's a, it's kind of, the program is, is big and flexible. And because of that, it's difficult to find a place to start. <laughs> and let me let me just make a couple points and ask you a question 
uh, currently, Christian has these big robot arms. They got a big Puma robot arm and a little little robot arm. And I was going to ask you, have you built anything as a, like a mobile vehicle? Have you done any of that kind of stuff yet? I have. I had a just working on a, a rocker bogey platform. Um, it's it's in progress. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it's basically the motors I got for it aren't really quite up to the task. <laughs> Uh, the ones I want are impossibly expensive. <laughs> I don't know if you looked at that. There's an MIT paper on how they designed the the motors for. Um, it's, it's like a little dog kind of robot. Uh, I think it was, it was published maybe two years ago. They went through the whole thing, and it's um, it's a three phase motor, hundred kT somewhere around there or kV. Um, they called it cheap and they're a thousand bucks a pop <laughs> so you need six of them for that platform so it's uh I'm looking for something similar performance uh without dropping that kind of coin on it and the other point i'll make if, if this hasn't come up yet christian is also in our local robotics group in minneapolis here so now we've got several people that doug, doug is also from our robotics group and i don't remember if there's anybody else that, that got on because of that. You guys have a good center of gravity there with um, interests. Javier's got some, he's had some success using three phase motors, but I think you're using off the shelf motors, aren't you, Javier? You're on mute if you're still there, Javier. I know they have some kind of tempting ones of that Hobby King. I think they're um, skateboard motors. He had a he had a post out where he uh, showed how to use. They were the ones off of um, hoverboards. Um, his little one is the hoverboard motors and his big one, he's got bicycle, electric bicycle wheels, but I think they're both just off the shelf uh, wheels that you can buy that he's using. And Kristen, I'll, I'll send you a link to our index of all of our videos we did. And uh, for, in this case, Javier did a presentation on his robot. So he goes through and tells you uh, how the whole thing works. So I'll send you that link. And assuming that, the, uh, that Matt hasn't deleted the videos completely, you can just cut and paste the link from there and you can go watch any of the stuff that's on there. I've got 137 out of the 250 meetings documented as to what we were talking about. And it's it's, it's certainly better than nothing, but it, it's still not, it's not the best solution, but I'll, I'll send you a link on that. Okay, thanks. Back to my ports of lazy, I could post it right now. Let's see. Oh, and another point, the, these meetings get recorded and they're out on the uh, uh, Google Drive or wherever. And if you look at the top link on uh, the Slack channel, it, uh, it's, got, it's got a link to it there to tell you where they're at. Oh, I'm getting close to having this here. Chat, 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 chat. So if you go, if you go to that link, it's just... Uh, Three files. One is a README file that kind of kind of ran, randomly says or rambling ramblingly says what I did to index these, and then there, there's the first attempt and the second attempt. If you just open up that, and, and people point out if you just open that in the browser, you get these weird, extra weird characters. But if you take the file and download it as a text file to your computer, the weird characters go away. And if you uh, let me open up one here. So if I do this. And I do this. And look here, here's the one character we talked about, these strange things at the end. I just said as a text file, those go away. But it basically says uh, on this date, there's a community meeting. And if it just says, it goes directly into chat. The chat is the like the Zoom chat we're doing right now that originally got copied and pasted into the description. And this one down below, it says on 116, 2018, there's a community meeting. I cut and paste that link out here. We'll see if these still work. Copy, 
paste come on come on and the apparently this is still there what matt did he went through and he set all these to uh um unadvertised so the whole index that was there disappeared so yeah it works can, can you see it? by the way can you see uh, the video that popped up yeah i, I never know how, how to do it so yeah so anyway that that's what you can do so you can search that here go through that readme file i even give suggestions on how to search it and uh for instance search for presentation and you get a lot of things where people went through and you know spent an hour talking about their projects and if you or just search for gps or just search for motors or whatever what do you want and so it's hopefully this is, this is better than not having these at all so and i did download all 250 videos and what well, javier did somebody else downloaded uh in fact he downloaded even more than i did because I, I didn't download the ross agri or the Ross Europe meetings because I really didn't care about those. And there's a bunch of little tutorials on there that I, I didn't download. But anything that was an actual meeting, whether it's the lawn tractor meeting or the community meeting, I downloaded them and there's the index to it. And you can, so the, the links are on that index so you can go look at anything that's there. So other than that, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Okay. And on Zoom, you can you can save the the chat window. There's a, a button down there. It's pretty. I, I'm I'm on Windows right now. There's a little ellipsis button down there where it says File. You click on that and you say Save Chat. And I think Al put those out on the uh, the Google Drive too. So those may or may not all be out there. I don't know. Well, the ones. If your question is, am I copying those out to the Google Drive? The answer is yes. I, I, knew, I knew you did some of them. I didn't know if you remembered to do it every time or or what. So. I'm a little slow, but I I get there. I, my problem is I I forget to do it, so that 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 would be <laughs> that would be my problem. <clears throat> oh, what one other thing I'll point out I I tried to load Wine on my robot computer, so I I was able to load Wine to run Windows programs on my Ubuntu computer. And it, it seemed to load up really well. And I went to, uh, I downloaded the, uh, the U Connect, U, no, U Center software for the U Blocks uh, uh, receivers. I got that downloaded and I clicked on it and it complained. It turns out, well, it's a self, it, it's a Windows self extracting executable. So I had to do some more screwing around to get that work. And it's, oh, you need to download more stuff. And after about half an hour, I get a point where it pops up on the screen and I haven't actually physically plugged it into. A receiver you have to check it because it, it says oh do you want com1 through com27 which are all windows uh port names so i, I don't know what's going to happen when i plug it in and i've got a different uh linux port name so that, that that's one of the next things i gotta try and if i can get that to work then i gotta get my like remote desktop stuff working so i sit in front of my tv with my laptop log into my robot downstairs and pull up the desktop and then start up this this wine in the uh, the the GPS stuff so that way I can configure the GPS and see what the see what the values on it are doing so that's kind of a kind of a journey I was trying to do here. I thought you were, I thought all that was taking care of you with the Ardu Simple uh, platform. I mean, why why are you having to muck around with? Well, the 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 Ardu Simple platform is just simply that chip on a board, and you still have to set all the parameters. You know, it's like these pesky parameters we've been talking about all day. You have to set it up, make it make it do what you want. And I had it all set up. And then one day I wanted to compare to see if I had correction data or no correction data. So I clicked on the button that says reset to factory defaults. And I thought they were just going to change it in RAM. So the next time I turned it on, they'd still be there. Well, it didn't. It cleared, cleared out the flash and everything. So if I just go out to my my website or go out to the uh, Ross Agriculture uh, repo, and I've got my two parameter files, I can just load those back in and be ready to go. So it's just a matter of I've got to get them set back up to their so they're doing what both of them are doing what I want. So with Ardu Simple, you're still configuring down at the UBlox level. They don't give you like firmware for their whole. No, they, they just simply put a chip on a board and then they, they do give you parameter files you can load in, but they they were too lazy to tell you what the individual things are. So it takes the entire dump of what was there. You know, so, so the way you, 
the way this works, you reset the board, and it actually will run as an RTK receiver as soon as, you, as soon as you hit reset. But if you want to change it, you can go say change two or three parameters. They just dump that whole thing out, so you have no idea what they actually changed. But with the newer stuff, you can actually go in and say save just the stuff that was changed. So so just my three parameters and show up in my file. Then so number one, it makes more sense to somebody else. You know what you actually changed. But it, but it's just a matter. Of, it's just a chip on the board, and you still got to configure that. Uh, that, that they did nothing special other than putting it, putting it on the board, so it's still a matter of going through and making that stuff work. So it's not a black box. It's 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 hardware. It's it's hardware that you still are integrating more or less. Uh yes, and you can either use their their parameter files or use my parameter files, and you know to, to make any changes, you just change the parameters, make it do what you want. So it's not it's not a big deal. So the whole problem was it's, it's just that I have to drag a uh, Windows laptop up and plug into the, the robot in order to do anything with it. If you know, I want to view the, say, the ground plot or whatever, you know, see how accurate it is. I always had to use my Windows computer. And then the guys from uh, Wales said, oh, I just I just loaded Wine and ran that software under that. So I so they, they got it to work and somebody else got it to work. It might have been Javier, in fact. So somebody else in the world said, yes, they're running that software under Wine and it works. So that, that's just one more thing. It's, it's one more thing where I don't have to have multiple computers to do this stuff. <clears throat> uh, the only other thing that I've worked on is uh, I stripped out the partial PID out of the speed controller on the low level side for my point and then tested out in the yard and got the PWM signals to get half meter a second and one meter a second using the RTK satellite as the speed sensor. Um, so I know those settings. So now I can go back and try to put in a, a real PID and have, you know, sort of a baseline number as to see what, what it's uh, generating, so. So if you know what the numbers are to make it run half a meter per second and to make it run one meter per second, how repeatable are, are those? Did you try that to see if you go back the next day and give it half a meter per second, does it run at the same speed or is it too variable to just directly control it that way? I didn't go back the next day, but I can go back tomorrow and answer that question. Because if, if it's repeatable, then you don't need to do a PID at all. You can just simply say, I know how, I, I give it this number, it'll go this fast, and that's that's all you gotta do. But I, since I keep complaining about that super 200 server, I don't know that it will be repeatable enough to uh, make that work. I think with the, the fancy Chinese ones, I think it would, you just simply say, go to, set of this angle, and as long as you've got it, you know, figured out what, what values for what, to give you what angle to make it go what speed, I think those, you just simply feed it that and it will go at that speed. But I haven't actually tried that, haven't verified it. Well, that. I mean, so my yard is not perfectly flat. Um, I mean, there is some undulation in the, in the curvature. Um, I mean, I think there would be a benefit of having a PID there um, because I can't all of, you know, there is going to high grass, low grass, you know, did it just rain? I mean, there is going to be some things affecting that. And my, my, my question is how much does that stuff affect the hydrostatic transmission? I'm thinking if you set it to 25% speed, it doesn't really care too much about what you've got there, but I, I may be completely wrong in that, so I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> out of curiosity, how do you choose which sensor or measurement is the winner? You know, you have your GPS and that can be wrong. You have a wheel encoder and that could be misleading. And then you have a model of where you're guessing you should be. How do you, how do you blend all that together? So my simple answer was I, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't have a very good answer. The RTK was um, a little bit more smooth. The wheel encoder gives you instantaneous velocity, right? And so it was 
a little bit more um, because it's instantaneous. It's a little bit more uh, uh, noisy. So I thought it would be easier to just use the more smooth number from the RTK. Because I, I mean, it, it seems like the, the best approach would be to, to blend all those together and try and come up with a, a best estimate of what you're doing. You might be right. I, I'm not saying I don't know. I don't know how to do that, but I, I, I would hesitate to bring up like that. <laughs> I would hesitate to bring up Ted Planner, but it's whatever Ted Planner. <laughs> how does Ted Planner use speed? Jeff, when it's calculating the, the turn angle that it wants you to turn. It, it gives you a value in, in meters per second for speed, and it's going to do what it wants to do. It's going to do what you told it to do in those parameters. Yeah, it seems like you could use almost anything in there. It's just a, a number that you use for scale, right? Well, my assumption is it's, I, I thought some brainiac somewhere was trying to calculate radians per second, and because that's going to be based on speed, that it, it obviously is ingesting speed into its calculation. But that's just me. I don't know. So, so let, I, maybe I shouldn't bring this up. But oh, come ask. on! It's fun, let, you know. Let, you're, let you're me just ask. Me, so it's easy to to like you know hit me over the head. On, on your command velocity message that you're interpreting right now, do you interpret the speed as a value in meters per second or some other some other numbers? Are you asking in my low-level controller um, on speed? What's yeah. that? What's that scalar for me? Yeah, a meter per second. So, so that one is in meters per second. Okay. I was hoping that wasn't a plus and minus one thing that uh, somebody else had thrown in there. <clears throat> meters, meters per second, Mr. Jeff. And that's why the second field where it says, here's your angle in radians, you need to interpret that as angle in radians, just like on the velocity, you calculated that in meters per second, because that's, you know, th those, are, those are the standards that you have to follow, or those are the standards you should follow. You can, you can do anything you want, but it's, if you want it to match rep 103 and rep 105 and 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 match the modified Teb planner, then then yeah, that's just the way it's gonna do. <clears throat> Christian, the other name for this conference call is, you know, Jeff demonstrates, um, reminds me how dumb I am. <laughs> well, speaking of name name of this call and the name of our Slack group, uh, should should we try to eliminate Ross agriculture completely? If you know, I, I'm surprised that when I pull up the original Ross Agriculture website, it doesn't say this website, this domain name is for sale. And when you go to that YouTube channel, I'm surprised it didn't pop up and say this YouTube channel is for sale. Because at some point, there may be pissing and moaning about, uh, well, but I own that name, you can't use it. So I did, do we just need to come up with a new name for what we're doing and try to try to try to use that? I just call it a while I've thought about trademark law, but um, if you have a name and continuous use, you don't you don't buy rights to it just because you own a YouTube channel. So like if I operated a business called, you know, Birds Nerds, you know, and I did that for the past 10 years, I would have a local rights to it just by well, merely yep. operating with it. The other thing on that YouTube channel, it used to be called Ross Agriculture YouTube channel, and he changed that to Robot Agriculture, and it could be even the uh, the main uh, website. He might have done that too on that. So I, I don't know. Nothing was ever said. He, he just kind of disappeared, and we just moved on and started doing something else. So we we don't know what's going on. I just think, you know, that might come up in the future that there might be some complaining about that. So. It'll be interesting when the first conference comes comes around and people start asking about Ross Agriculture to see how that how that goes. Jeff, I have the Slack channel down as Tractor Automation. I don't have a reference to Ross. Did you see a reference to Ross someplace? Um, I, I think there was one link on the in that general, and there it's, it's I think it says Robot Agriculture. I think there's a link out to the website that doesn't have anything anymore. That's to but, his thing. Yeah, 
but 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 the point is, you know, everybody involved were just you know randomly says Ross Agriculture because that's that's what it originally was. We did this for three years, so that's why it's just ingrained in people's heads that that's that's what it is. So, and I I don't know if that's an issue one way or the other. It's just something that has occurred occurred to me. And I still can't drive an AB line, so. <laughs> Well, I can't either, so that, there you go. <clears throat> At least we're in the same boat. But I have hope. I'm guessing Javier can, because he just got videos of this thing driving around out in the field and, and actually doing stuff. There you go. So we know, if, we know Kyler can do it. We should all just move to Argentina or uh, <clears throat> do our own homebrew uh, Pure Pursuit uh, code. And and can we stop the recording so I can make some other comments? Uh, let me find the button.